Hello, everybody. Um, common question I get a lot is uh, how how does one get into the world of armored combat? So I thought I'd put this little video together to uh, give everybody kind of a, a brief starter guide on uh, how how one uh, gets into such a crazy sport as uh, medieval night fighting. Um, so yeah, come along with me on this wonderful journey. <laughs> and find out what it takes to be a knight. He's reaching for those grapes. He's trying to make his wine, and the wine's already sounding like a violin with that cheese and wine. Um. So the first question I get a lot, and I'll just answer right off the bat because I'm not someone who enjoys wasting people's time, is how much does the armor cost and where do I get it? So where do you get it? These are some examples. Um, Medieval Extreme is the largest. Burhurt Tech is also very reputable, and Master Yuli is very um, a very skilled craftsman. So these are some very reputable sources to get armor. And uh, here are some examples of how much said armor costs. Obviously, sky's the limit with this stuff, but these are some entry level examples um, on that stuff. So just to answer that question right off of the bat, without wasting anybody's time, um, there you go. But that being said, I highly, highly, highly recommend you do not buy armor right away, as I'll get into further in this video why you should definitely wait before purchasing armor. Um, can you repeat the part of this stuff where you said all about the things? So what is Buhurt or Armored Combat or Medieval MMA, one of the many names of the sport? Um, to put it simply, um, it's a recreation of medieval tournament fighting, something they did back in medieval times for sport and entertainment. It is not dueling to the death. Um, it is um, combative sport, it, what the knights used to do in ye olden days to sharpen their skills and, and stay physically fit during peace times and to also put on shows to entertain the people. Um, there are three basic categories. Um, in Buhurt, um, there are duels, pro fights, and melees. Um, duels are weapon-based combat, so that's only sword strikes and weapon strikes count for points. Um, typically, no grappling and no punching or kicking is allowed. Then you have your pro fights, also known as medieval MMA, um, and that's relatively self-explanatory. It's basically MMA, but with steel armor, steel weapons, all that sort of thing. Um, and then there are melees, which that is group combat. And that generally um, involves 5 versus 5, 10 versus 10, 15 versus sometimes 150 versus 150. Um, those are rare cases. Um, and, and the way those work, ge generally, um, last man standing wins. So if you go to the ground, you're considered dead. Um, and then the last team to be standing wins. Pretty straightforward example. So those are that's the basic overview of what these um, what the categories are. Um, and it's very important that you understand which category you're interested in, especially before buying armor, because each of these categories have different um, not requirements, but different advantages to having certain types of armor versus other types of armor, which I'll get into. Uh, shortly. Firmly grasp it! That do it! So what I tell everybody um, who is interested in getting into this sport, um, just a few simple, straightforward guidelines, um, simple steps that you can follow to get involved with this sport. Step number one, find a club. Step number two, get your fitness in order. Um, because this sport is a very physically demanding sport, which is pretty obvious. Wearing 60, 70, 80 pounds of armor, you can imagine it's quite taxing on the body. Um, then your next step would be getting a soft kit to train in at any assortment of sports equipment, hockey gear, lacrosse, football, that sort of thing. Um, then once you've done that, um, I highly recommend you compete 
Um, if your club allows it, which I know most clubs have what you would call uh, loner kits that uh, are very well loved pieces of armor, but they are kind of there for new members to try out the sport, uh, to get engaged, to see if this is something you even want to do. So I highly recommend getting in a loner kit, getting out there, competing either in pro fights, duels, melees, whatever, whatever suits your fancy. Go do that first um, before you buy armor because it is a rude awakening the first time you wear armor, let me tell you that much. Um, and then once you've done all that, once you've got your fitness in order, you found a group, you've, you've practiced, you've trained, you've competed, then and only then would I recommend you spending thousands of dollars on a shiny metal suit. So the first step would be finding a club near you. Now, how do you do this? Well, simplest answer is a Google search. Um, type in local Boohurt armored combat clubs in my area, and I'm sure you'll be able to find some. There's lots that have Facebook groups. Um, Night Finder, I'll put the link here, is an excellent resource for that, um, for searching clubs in your area. Um, reach out to the community. There is a, a very good subreddit um, a Boo Hurt subreddit that is filled with lots of very experienced fighters, many of which far more experienced than I that have much more information that you can go to. There's a Discord, if you prefer Discord, uh, again, filled with very experienced fighters that can give you lots of very good information. Um, so I highly recommend reach out to them, find a club, find one that's near you, um, because again, this isn't a sport you can do alone. You need training partners, you need a club. You know, and that's the best way to start anything, you know, find a gym, find a club and just start training with people, meet some people, you know, talk to some people. And that's, uh, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Go find a club. Good evening and welcome again to Pumping Up with Hans and Franz. Once again, I am Hans. Yeah, I'm, I'm Franz and we, we are here to pop your up. Up. Step number two, which is a step many people. <laughs> probably don't like to hear but uh honestly this could be step number one um something you can do right this instant um is fitness training uh squats push-ups you know that sort of deal running um i cannot stress enough how important cardio and muscle endurance is in this sport um i don't care if you're the most skilled swordsman on the planet if you can't last longer than 30 seconds you are not going to be successful in this sport, like period, baseline. Um, so, you know, if you're not someone who really regularly works out and uh, is in good shape, I would say that is the number one thing you should be focusing on if you are serious about competing in this sport. Um, and if you are someone, you know, who has an extensive athletic background, you have a, you have an, a leg up starting off. Um, but I really, really cannot stress em enough you know, we have new people come in all the time and they're, you know, not necessarily uh, ready for the physical um, physical requirements that the sport come with. And that being said, I've seen people that come in and, you know, maybe they're not the most athletic person in the world, but they love the sport so much that it's what motivates them to get into good shape. And that that's a beautiful thing to see. I, lo I love to see that. Um, but point being... Get your fitness in order. Uh, I recommend squats. Squats are huge. Your legs are a huge part of this sport because you're, you know, you got all that extra weight on. Um, muscle endurance exercises. I, I'm a big fan of battle ropes. Um, if you are familiar with that, anything that will allow you to be strong for longer. Not necessarily just doing one rep push-ups, but doing high reps um, because. You know, especially when it comes to the pro fight world, um, you need a lot, a lot of cardio, a lot, a lot of muscle endurance. Um, so yeah, I, I cannot stress that enough. I, I won't really want to nail this home that you should, you know, regardless of even if you are getting into this sport, you should get your fitness in order regardless, you know, um, as it's so important for your health and everything. But if you're serious about this sport, get your fitness in order. 
train, train, train. That's something you can do right this second before you even find a club. Get your fitness in order. What are those? They are my Crocs. Okay. Now for the fun stuff. The stuff that you get to spend money on. Everybody likes spending money. Who doesn't like spending money? I like spending money. You like spending money. Nobody likes doing squats, but people like spending money. So the first things that you should be spending money on, it's not the armor, is what would be called a soft kit. Now this is a suit of soft armor, as it obviously entails, that you would use to train, you know, foam swords, padded helmets, padded shirt, that sort of thing. Um, specifically, the first piece of equipment I think anybody should buy, period, is the gambeson. And what that is, is it's a padded jacket that goes underneath the armor. And mainly the reason why you should get your own gambeson is because gambesons are very gross to share. Um, <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to be um, sharing gambesons. So get your own gambeson. That, and that's also what allows you to wear the armor because you will put arming points on that so you can use loner gear and that sort of thing. So get your gambits in first. Then, you know, hockey gloves are a good um, use. You can get that at a used sporting goods store. You know, lacrosse helmets, you know, that sort of thing for, for your helmet. You know, they have purpose-built um, Boohert equipment that you can find. Boohert Tech sells that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so get that get all that squared away you know you should be able to get that for around 50 to 100 bucks altogether shouldn't shouldn't be too expensive and this is where you want to start um because again you want to be able to train and know that this is a sport that you want to do before you start spending thousands of dollars so yeah get your gamison get some hockey gloves get a lacrosse helmet or a purpose-built helmet for boo hurt and yeah get get to training we're ready we're ready to go out there and hit them every play right now baby you're gonna know we came to ford field he hasn't slept in probably uh seven days okay so you got your soft gear you've been training for a while you really want to get out there and start pummeling some heads i would recommend talking to your glove talking to your club using a loaner kit um and get out there and experience what it's truly like fighting in armor because there is no experience that can truly prepare you for it other than doing it <laughs> uh, can't stress that enough and in doing so you will find out okay do i even like melees you know i've i've met many people in in my club personally they start and they think oh yeah let's do some melees they buy all the gear and the melee gear is very heavy because you want maximum protection and then they do a couple melees and they're like, oh, this is way too brutal. Maybe I just want to stick to the one-on-one -on -one pro fights or the duels or that sort of thing. And now they've got a whole bunch of really heavy melee gear that, granted, you can use it for pro fights and duels, but you are at a disadvantage having a heavier kit going against someone who has a lighter kit. Um, and so then... You got buyer's remorse and all that sort of thing. So that's why I really emphasize that you compete um, before you buy any gear so that you know, or, you know, vice versa, you do duels. You say, I really want to do duels. You try duels and you're like, well, maybe this isn't intense enough. And I don't like how it's just, you know, sword strikes and it's just this. I want to get into wrestling and that sort of thing. But you spend all this money on very light gear. That's not going to protect you. And that definitely would not recommend using in melees because you could seriously get injured. So compete, compete, compete. Figure out which of the three categories are best suited for you. And then, and only then, once you have figured that out, start thinking about buying armor. So compete, figure out if this is right for you. If it's not right for you, good. You didn't spend $3,000 on a suit of armor and now you can go home Maybe you just bought some soft gear and it's not too big of a loss. So please figure out if this is right for you before you jump in. How much is this? I have no earthly idea. Okay. So now on to the fun stuff. 
buying armor. Okay, all right. So there's a few things that you need to know before you dive into the beast of buying armor. Namely, it has to match historical accuracy um, to some degree. Um, it's not as strict as some other historical sports, but basically the requirement is there needs to be some sort of depiction through a painting or um, something, an historical piece in a museum that has an example of the armor you're going to buy. If you're just going to Medieval Extreme or one of the bigger sellers, basically anything you buy there is going to be fine. But you have to make sure that your set matches. So you can't mix match different periods. If you're going to have a, a full plate set, you need the whole thing to be plate. You can't have high medieval era armor with early medieval era armor. Um, and again, talk to your club, talk to your club, talk to your club. They will guide you in the right direction. Ask the subreddit, ask the discord. Um, they will help you with those sort of things, those sort of questions. Cause that is very, very, very important. Um, in America, they're not as strict on the historical accuracy of things. Um, but just to be safe, make sure you do that. Again, another another key detail, a lot of people like blackened armor. Blackened armor is great because it, it's resistant to rust and that sort of thing. But if you have blackened armor, then your whole set has to be blackened. So if you want to be a black knight, you got to have your whole set black. Um, so that's that's an important detail to add. Um, what type of armor you want. As I've said before, if you're going into melees, you're going to want a very tanky set that's protective because you don't want your spine to get smashed in half. Um, if you're going for duels and you're going for pro fights, you're going to want probably a lighter set of armor because, again, you want to be able to move. You want to have endurance. You want to be able to outlast your opponent. I can't stress enough how important um, endurance is. And especially in a pro fight where there's wrestling and striking and you're just constantly in front of your opponent 24-7, the whole fight. Um, what order should you buy? Um, we always recommend you buy your helmet first. Again, kind of for the same reason you would buy your gambeson because sharing helmets are kind of gross. You know, putting all another person's sweat on your face, you know, not something you'd necessarily want to do. Um, and then you can go from there. Some people just buy their whole set outright. Some people piece it together, you know, depending on what your financial situation is, you know, judge accordingly. Me personally, I 99% of my set is all secondhand. Um, that's great because you can get it for significantly cheaper. Um, you can try the armor on before you buy it, which is nice. Um, if you're buying, you know, from someone directly close to you, um, so yeah, recommend buying your helmet first. Helmet also dictates kind of what style of set you want to get, um, whether it's Eastern, Western, high medieval, early medieval, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and then go from there, you know, again, talk to your club, talk to your club, talk to your club. I can't stress that enough. They're going to be the ones that can give you the best advice, um, because they know you personally, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, let's see what else. Uh, armor maintenance. So armor maintenance is also another very important thing. Um, this, for example, is the first uh, weapon I ever bought, the first piece of armor I ever bought. And if you can see, there's all these sort of stain marks all over the sword. So don't make the mistake I made and not properly maintaining your weapons. <laughs> um, because if you want them to be nice and shiny, you're going to have to maintain them properly. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you basically want some sort of rust uh, remover. This is something I need to tackle. But essentially what happens is you get these rust marks and then eventually you can you can get the rust off, but then it leaves those stains. And I do believe there is a process of removing the stains, but that is, again, more 
labor intensive. Um, and it's something you can altogether avoid with just proper maintenance. Every time you use it, clean it, use your rust remover uh, product of choice. And uh, yeah, preventing rust is a lot easier than getting rid of rust. So again, another thing you should know before you buy armor is you don't just buy armor and then you're good. You got to maintain it. Otherwise, it'll fall apart and it starts rusting. The integrity starts falling and then armor starts breaking and you don't want armor to break. No, sir. So armor maintenance, another very important key detail um, you have to know before going into buying armor. So yes, make sure you are fully educated before you buy armor and you want to buy good armor from reputable places. Talk to your club. There are smaller um, armorers out there um, that you can you can do, and they're they're just as well. But definitely, definitely, definitely talk to your club before buying from any smaller sources. Again, Medieval Extreme, Boo Hurt Tech, Master Yuli, very reputable places. Um, you most likely won't go wrong buying from there. Um, and maintain the armor maintain the armor please 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 this stuff is expensive you don't want to have to buy another set of armor just because you were too lazy to spray a little anti-rust um spray on it um yeah so pretty straightforward anyway moving on so yeah Basically, simple steps. Find a club. You know, Nightfinder is a good resource for that sort of thing. Google search, um, Reddit, subreddit, um, great place for that. Discord, again, another good place. Ask around, say, hey, I'm in XYZ location. Are there any clubs near me? And um, there's plenty of people who will happily answer your question on those platforms. Um, fitness, can't stress it enough how important fitness is in this sport, more so than even you know, boxing or, or kickboxing or that sort of thing, you know, um, not to say it's not important. Those it's important everywhere. Um, but just wearing 60 pounds of gear, you know, it's going to, it's going to tire you out just standing in it. So fitness, 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 squats, muscle endurance, high reps, all that sort of thing. Really, really focus on that. Get a soft kit together, get your gambus in, you know, get, uh, get training, get uh, get used to how it is, learn to grapple. Grappling is a huge part of the sport, and it is extremely exhausting. So um, get used to that, get your gambus in, get all that soft kit stuff. And then if your club allows it, compete in some loner gear or just do some, you know, sparring sessions with the loner gear with your, with your club. You know, figure out what aspect of the sport you want to compete in, whether it's dueling, whether it's pro fights, whether it's melees, you know, and once you figure that out, then that can guide your purchasing in the armor. Okay. I want to, I, I'm a really big beefy guy who used to play football. So I really like the melee. So go get a big tanky melee set and go kick some butt um, for that sort of thing. Um, and again, talk to your club. I am not an expert by any means. I'm just a guy who has a camera and a YouTube channel, um, but I thought I'd make this video to just help you guys out. So yeah, once you've competed a little, once you've figured out that the sport is right for you, once you realize which aspect of the sport you want to compete in, then and only then should you make the leap into buying armor. I highly recommend. I was doing this sport for about two years before I got a full set of armor. Full set of armor. So can't stress that enough. Armor is the last thing you want to be doing when getting involved in this sport how to how to buy the armor reputable sources here this is how much they cost um you want to buy your helmet first you want to make sure your set matches you want to make sure your set is safe obviously um and again is why you want to be buying from reputable places um maintaining the armor you know make sure you have a good rust removal um product that you can apply to your armor um all that sort of good stuff and then you're ready to go. You're off to the races. You got your armor. You know how to maintain it. You're physically fit. You have a good club. You met a bunch of new friends and, you know, 
have fun. It's a great sport. Uh, you know, there's a lot of really nice people in this community. It's very small. It's very niche. People are very welcoming to new people. Um, you know, it's a small sport, but it's growing. It's growing very rapidly. Um, and I just want to be here to help guide you through it. And if you're an experienced fighter who knows more than me, because there's a lot of those people out there, I, I, I know. Please write in the comments, tell me anything I missed, add to the information. The whole goal of this YouTube channel and this video is to just spread it out there. I get a lot of questions like, how do I start? How do I do this? How much does the armor cost? So I thought I'd make this video addressing some of that information. Um, so yeah, anyway. Have a good day. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> and uh, go out there and go kick some butt and uh, find a cool club and meet some cool people. Yeah. Welcome to the real world. You're, You're going to learn. This is the real world. You learn it early, son. Is all you ever do in your house? I'm done playing now. <laughs>